Hello guys. In this tutorial, I'm going to talk about working with blocks feature of the JFLAM. Let's see what's the objective. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about JFLAM's special operators, which is exclamation and tilde. Also, I'm going to talk about the block features of the JFLAM. And also, I will mention the using the S or stay option that is really, really highly recommended. We will explain everything through an example. Let's get started. We want to implement a function by a Turing machine. It's a standard Turing machine, but we are allowed to use the stay option as well. Okay, so we have two unary numbers x and y and let's assume that x uh, goes first and they are separated by a zero and our goal is to design a Turing machine that compute this function before starting let's visualize what would be the input what would be the output and that make it easier to understand what we are supposed to do Based on this function, if x is greater than or equal to y, we need to add them, add the x and y. So here the x is greater than y, it's a 3, and here we have 2. So the output is supposed to be adding uh, these two unary numbers. So here we have 5 ones. And if they are equal, again, based on this rule of the uh, function, again, the, we should add them. So here, 3, 1 as a y, 3, 1 as a x, so we will have 6 ones at the output. And if the x is less than y here, then based the rule of the function, we should show the 0. So in other words, we should erase and just you know show the zero. Here I put the question mark here and here because we don't care what they are at the end. We just need to show this zero, all right? And we know that how uh, JFLAP shows the output in transducer mode. So wherever the cursor is uh, to the right, until the first blank here if we put a zero here and if we put the cursor on it and on the right we have a blank then it shows the zero so for this we would need three blocks or three routines or subroutines so one of them need to compare the x and y the other one need to add and the third one need to erase. So we have a comparer, adder and eraser. And here how we can put all of them together to create a, this string machine like this. Okay, so let's start with implementing the comparer. So before going further, since all of these routines are supposed to use the same tape, when we are here, so this block of the code are using the same tape, right? And when we activate this adder here, and this block of the code is supposed to use the same tape. So it is important, it's a, you know essential that when we are going from one block to other block, we need to specify where the cursor is. Okay, so for this purpose, uh, we would say, okay, so this block, when it starts, it needs a precondition. What is the precondition? The position of the cursor. And if it goes to activate this other the other block we need to say okay what is the post condition of this block the post condition is again the position of the cursor and the con you know definitely the content of the the tape all right so every block needs a precondition and post condition and 
actually JFLAP doesn't care about this. That's you as the designer. You need to specify that by yourself and be careful that when you are activating another block where the cursor is located. So in your design, you need to specify it clearly that, okay, so when I start this block where I expect to have the cursor and when I am leaving the block where I am supposed to put the cursor. So the post condition for this block will be the precondition for this block or this block, right? Yeah, I will explain that in the uh, next slide clearly. Before going further, we need to set the JFLAP preferences. You need to go to the preferences and the Turing machines preferences and enable the transition from the Turing machine final state, accepting by final state and you know uncheck the accept by whole thing and allow stay for tape head or transition which this guy will allow you to use the stay option. Here I put the, the picture for your reference. Our first block will be the comparer, which is the, you know, the most complicated one in this small project. All right, so as usual, we create a sample input and try to write the code based on this input. So let's say we have, let's say three, one, and we have a zero here and then two one here so in fact this part is our x this part is our y so here x is greater than y okay so now let's see how we can solve the problem okay let's start from here okay what's the strategy the strategy is i read one of these ones and then I mark it as X and then I go to the right after I find the zero and then after that I find a, a, another one and mark it let's say for example Y and then return back so my goal is to compare how many ones I have on the left side of the zero how many uh, one I have on the right side so I match one by one these guys and then if we have more one here then it means that the x is greater than y okay so this is my strategy let's just start from here if it is one then change it x go to the right so after this we have x here and the cursor goes here now i need to bypass all of the ones to reach the zero all right one of those special character can be useful here instead of uh, say saying that okay if it is one then go uh, you know don't change it go to the right instead of that i would say if it is not zero exclamation mark here is, is a not if it is not zero then whatever it is and in this tilde here is whatever it is don't change it so if it was one yeah just uh, you know don't change it and if it is something else so for this particular example probably uh, you don't uh, feel that how much this not is important but just uh, you know as an example imagine that we have a zero here and then we have x here let's say we have a another a here and let's say b and then y something like this and then let's say we are here right and we want to reach let's say this blank here so you need to create a loop that and say okay if it is y then don't change it go to the right if it is a so you see you need to mention all of them to be able to bypass all of these and to reach here for example but 
by using this exclamation mark, we easily, we can say, if it is not blank, then whatever it is, don't change it and go to the right. So just one label, it makes, uh, you know, it's equivalent to all of those uh, things that uh, I just mentioned. All right. So this is the beauty of the exclamation mark, which is equivalent to not. If it, if, it, if it is not zero, then whatever it is, go to the right. All right. So after this loop, what would happen here? Uh, all of these ones will be bypassed and the cursor goes here to reach to the zero. And then we would say if it is zero, then don't change it. Go to the right. And after this, then cursor goes here and then it reaches here. Uh, we have another one, so we need to change it to, let's say, Y, for example. If we say, if it is y, 1, change it to Y and go to the left, right? Okay, so now the cursor is here, right? Yeah, and this guy is Y now. All right, now we need to go back and find the X. And when we find the X, and then we need to do the same thing. So you agree that we will have loop here. I want to create this loop from here to here. Up to this point, the cursor is on the zero, right? I need to go to the left and find the X. Again, I can say here, I can say here in, in a loop, let's say if it is not X, whatever it is, don't change it and go to the left. So this loop will go up to here and it finds the X, all right? And then here I would say if it is X, don't change it, go to the right. Now the cursor is here. So this procedure should be continued. So then we would say if it is one, change it to X and go to the right. The cursor now is here. And then this, this guy is saying that if it is not zero, uh, whatever it is, go to the right, it find the zero. And here it says, if it is zero, go to the right. And here, now we are here. So we need to bypass all of these Y's as well. So we put a loop here and we say, if it is Y, don't change it, go to the, to the right, right? So this loop bypasses all of these Y's here and it reaches here. And if it is one, yes, it is one, go to the, go, you know, change it to Y, go to the left and it is here. And this loop, uh, you know, we don't need to change this loop because uh, this loop is finding the X. And this is another uh, beauty of this, uh, you know, not. Otherwise, we have we had to uh, put a label that to bypass all of the uh, Ys as well. All right. So uh, it goes and it finds the X, which is this guy, this X. All right. And then uh, if it is X, go to the right, it goes here. Now we are here. It's one, yes, change it to X. And bypass all of this, go to the zero, and in, we are here. And if it is zero, go to the right, now we are here. And bypass all of the Y's, yeah, bypass all of the Y's. If it is one, it is not one here. So that's the clue that we get uh, that the number of ones, I mean, the X was greater than Y, right? Because we converted this X as a one, but we don't have any corresponding Y for that. So it means that number of X is greater than Y. Here, after this, when it was not one, it means that it is blank so if it is blank then uh, we would say don't change it go to the left now we are here right 
Okay, so that's our clue that the x is actually greater than 1. Yeah, we still have, uh, you know, other things to do. But at least we know that uh, up to this point, when we are here, it means that x is greater than y. Now let me create another example that uh, x and y are equal. So we would say a 1, 1, and 0, 1, and 1, and blank here. If we start with this situation, then, okay, so let me, before we forget that, what was this? Up to this point, x is greater than y. Okay, so at this situation, if we feed this string into uh, this machine, then if you follow this, uh, so if it is 1, yeah, I am here. Yeah, you can follow me at, like this. So if it is 1, change it to x go to the right and then go up to find the zero here and go to the right now we are here and if it is one change it to y go to the left bypass and find all you know go all the way to the left and find the x and uh, if it is x go to the right yeah so we follow exactly the same uh, loop again it is x go and find this guy and find it to y and go to the left we are here now I actually in this loop loop until it is not x and so I, I'm sorry it is x so as long as it is not x loop it find here then it goes uh, if, if it says if it is x don't change it go to the right and we are here now all right and so we are here from the state point of view and the cursor uh, will be here on the zero. So if it is one, no, it is not one. This loop is no longer activated. What we need to do, if it is zero, now it is another clue that if it is zero, don't change it, go to the right. Because if it is, it is zero, either the number of the ones were equal or the x is less than y right so how can we figure it out yeah we can create a loop here and we can say if it is zero go to the right so we are now here and now we need to bypass all of these y's so if it is y don't change it go to the right we want to bypass them okay now here we have two possibilities either it is one so either we have another one here or we have blank so if we have one more one here then it means that uh, you know the y is greater than the x if it is blank it means that they are equal so we can check both of them so if it is equal you agree that we need to go to the here because we need to find a way that x is greater than or equal to y. So up to this point, uh, you know, this state actually was, let, let's call it x greater than or equal to y. So before we reached at this point x greater than y, and now if it is blank here, it means that it is, uh, you know, x is equal to y. Okay, so then we, we can think about the rest of that. Now let's, uh, let's continue when we have one more one here. So if we have one more one, I'm sorry, we don't need to change it anymore. We would say if it is one, go to the left. Let's say that in that case, it means that we have at least one more one. We can have more, let's say, for example, two or more one, but at least we know that the y, the y part is greater than the, the x part. So, all right, so if it is 1, go to the left. Now we are here. Okay, so now what is our job here? Our job is to clear everything because, you know, we have some y's and we have x's. Uh, so we messed up the, our input data. So we need to go over to the left. Uh, right now we are here. 
so we need to go to the left and if there is any y or x we need to change all of them to one all right so here i put a loop here i, I would say if it is x change it to one go to the left if it is zero don't change it go to the left and if it is y change it to one and go to the left so this loop you know will clean up all of the mess that we made and actually we you know the the marked uh, with the, the, the marks that we uh, put to make sure that we visited those cells so after this loop all of these y's will be converted to one so let me create one more thing here one so here we have blank so after this loop all of these stuff will be cleaned up and now if it is blank all of these loops will happen and now the cursor goes here if it is blank don't change it i would say stay because i i, I want to talk about that why i am saying stay now let's get back to our previous part if x is equal to y we reached here and if x is greater than y we reached here the same thing now in that case we need to clean up again so we would need such loop here as well so since we don't have room here so just imagine that we have uh, created this loop here and we put all of these stuff over here as well because we need to clean up so in both cases we clean up and the cursor goes here so to keeping track of the where the cursor is is a very important thing now we need to accept that otherwise jflab does not show the output right so in both cases we go here and we go here but this is gonna be a block comparer block right and we need to have two situation the return of this function or routine whatever you call it should be either x is greater than or equal to y or x is less than y so how can we do that one way that i suggest the cursor is now here on on this blank right now i would suggest that we mark the you know one of these two uh, in such a way that we can understand after, you know at the out of this box we can understand which was the output which was the outcome of the this routine so i would suggest that if it is greater than or equal to then you just put a g for example here or if this is the case if x is less than y we put a, an l here right okay so if this is the case then in, on this transition i would say if it is blank which is which was actually blank change it to g and go to the right and here i would say if it is blank change it to l which is you know stands for the less than and stay yeah in in this case we need to stay as well all right so when we finish with this block and when we go to the next block the next block just can check this cell's value if it is g it means that the x was greater and if it is l it means that the x was less than all right in this way uh, we can have multiple values for our next block all right to save some time i created and i implemented this uh, on the jflab and here is the the solution okay so as you see i put this, uh, a precondition and the post condition here the precondition as i said before is the the condition that we have the cursor because you know uh, you you remember that i said uh, all of these blocks are gonna use the same tape right so it is important that where we receive the cursor at the beginning of the block and where we put the cursor when we are leaving the block 
right so the precondition of this block so will be the leftmost symbol which was the okay, you know so the first uh, one of the x the but when we are leaving the here, block the post condition uh, yeah based on our and design we transfer this g one, one, or zero, l based one, on the outcome one, one. So of the, the block Greater than All right, so one. this is the implementation so of the case, comparer. Uh, uh, let me show you the on the JFLAP and the let's try to Actually, uh, you know test it and make sure the, that it works. All right, and let's this one is equal again the same thing, and here the y is greater than the x. All right, so let me run the. You see, it is showing the g. And the input stream, because you you, you remember that, uh, you know, we put the cursor on the G, and since we don't have any blank on the right side, the first blank is here at the end of the input string. That's why it is you you know showing the whole input string and the G. But the good news here is that we check that, that our code is working fine, and all of those X's and Y's is cleaned up. Okay, so for sure, let me uh, make, for example, this two, and this, let's make it bigger than this. And for this one, let me make this, and just one, yeah. Okay, so let's run it. So our code has a flaw here because it is rejecting. In this case, it doesn't show the output. And by a little bit inspection, probably we will see that here in on these two loops, uh, we said if it is X, when we are cleaning up, uh, if it is X, uh, change it to one and go to the left. And if it is zero, don't change it. And if it is Y, uh, change it to one. So we didn't anticipate if it is one what to do. All right. Okay. So we make some uh, correction here. Okay. So uh, here I would say if it is one, don't change it and go to the left. And probably the same thing we would need here. If it is one, don't change it go to the left so now let's get back to our all right so let me yeah now it, it is working fine all right so I need to change the slides picture and yeah I will do that later okay now let's uh, design an adder uh, again we create a happy example here Okay, so, so let's assume that the cursor is again on the leftmost symbol here. Okay, so what is the strategy? How can we add this X guy and this Y guy? Uh, we need just to change this 0 to 1. And before we start, yeah, we can change this 1 to blank. All right, so it's easy. We would say... If it is one, change it to blank and go to the right. And now we need to bypass all of the ones to reach to the zero. Yeah, we can use again the not guy. We can say as long as it is not zero, don't change whatever it is and go to the right. But since we just have ones here, so yeah, we don't need to use that fancy uh, feature we, we can just say if it is one don't change it and go to the right after this we reach here then we would say if it is zero change it to one and go to the left 
All right, so Y left here, this is going to be a block, and this block needs a precondition and postcondition. So the precondition was to receive the cursor on the leftmost symbol of the input string here. And I want to say that to as a post condition, I would say that return the cursor to the same place. After I finish this, so I would say I go to the left and then where is the cursor now? It is here now. And yeah, just remember that this is blank now. All right, so we can again, we can bypass all of the ones to reach the blank here. Uh, if it is one, bypass it, them. But let, let's this time, let's use this one, right? And don't change it to go to the left. And if it is blank, then go to the right and accept that. So now the cursor is here. And this guy changed to 1. So we already have the addition x plus y. And the cursor is on the, the right place that it shows the right output in that this way. All right. Now we want to put together all of those blocks in one block all right so here is how you can do that so turing machine with building blocks pick this it will give you an empty canvas like this and uh, but this canvas is a little bit different than the other uh, canvas you saw before we have two bottom more than the other turing machines so this guy is the building block and this is the connection between the building blocks all right so let's start from here so we want to inject the comparer this guy first so we put it here or uh, you know one of those block which i i save it as a comparer here yeah you should say comparer open it so you see it is. Uh, it looks like a simple uh, state, and even you can make it as an initial state or final state as well, right? So here, this is our initial state, the comparer, and uh, I need to inject another block, which is the other block. So I would say other again. It asks me where is that? So we need to point to the its own file this is my other and i need another one here which is the eraser and this is the eraser all right uh, i would need uh, one more that i need to make it as a uh, you know final state to make sure that you know we reach here Okay, so now how can we connect to these blocks together? So look at this building block. So the comparer x is greater than or equal to y. You remember when we, we were designing this comparer, I said uh, we create one cell to show that what was the outcome of these comparisons, right? So we use the capital G for greater or than equal and we use L, capital L, for the less than. We would say if it is G, yeah, we don't, we don't need that G. Tilda. So we make it blank and go to the right. And this go to the right, make sure that the cursor is now on the leftmost one of the X. All right. We can say the same thing here from comparer to the eraser. If it is capital L, just change it to blank and go to the right. And now the other and this uh, accepting state, uh, we can use this Tilda. connection. It gives you just one and you can say just the same thing here. So this actually, it means that whatever it is, don't change it and stay. Yeah. So how can I? figure it out that what is this equivalent just uh, uh, let me see you can you see here just double click on that it means that whatever it is don't change it and stay so jflap shows it as just one 
Okay, so this is our design and first let me test it. So in transducer mode, first let's say 111011. Here x is greater than y, so we expect that the other will be activated and 1110111 here is the equivalent so again the other should be activated 1101111 here we should we need to see the zeros all right so run and you see that it is working fine so you can put more test cases and to check that all right up to this point we are done with the our design but i'm going to give you some warnings that are very important warnings so we have the possibility to pick this select guy and go and right click here and go here to as a edit block yeah you can you see when you click on the edit block it it brings the block for you and and you can change it here right so yeah you can you whatever you can add or whatever and you can save it but it is not the way that we need to edit our blocks all right so jflab in this you know in this feature it is buggy and if you do that probably you will lose your main page or main block as well all right so how can we do that you need to go to the your block i mean your the block that you design and you save it as a separate file you need to do you know all of those modification on that block all right so let me open one of those for example if we want to change my adder yeah i opened that adder in the separate window and I need to modify it here, all right, and save it. And then we need to close this guy. And if it was other, right? Yeah, it was other. You need to delete this other, right? And again, re inject it here. So this is the safest way to modify all of those blocks. If you edit it, this is a big uh, you know, warning I am giving you. So if you try to edit it here and make some changes and save it, and you th if you think that it will be applied on, the, uh, on your uh, main block, yeah, you're wrong. It doesn't work that way, all right? So yeah, just keep in your mind that uh, if you don't want to lose your project, I mean, uh, whatever you, all of those changes that you made, just follow this instruction. I put all of these warnings here for your reference. And here are the references that we use to prepare this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to stop here. See you guys in the next video.